the meeting started with, I, I only took this meeting with you to tell you how much I hate, hate you and I hate this idea and um, let's, let's see this thing. Show me a demo, watch it crash and burn. You mentioned in a prior interview, don't meet your heroes, which I think <laughs> for anyone who's ever met a hero, they, they might relate to that for yeah. various reasons. Yeah. Um, has that, have you experienced that, or, or you and your brother, who's your co-founder, um, where you did talk to someone in the film and television industry and uh, their reaction was less than favorable? Absolutely, yeah. Um, and we, during the strike, we had a lot of downtime. We, we decided not to release features or do marketing. We kind of went back in a stealth mode, just out of respect for both sides and the negotiations. Um, um, but we did take meetings with people because they were very interested and, and the writers and filmmakers had downtime too. And there was one um, writer who's written on uh, big Marvel movies, I, I won't name, but like, you know, top of their game, uh, wealthy, successful. And the meeting started with, I, I only took this meeting with you to tell you how much I hate hate you and I hate this idea and um, let's let's see this thing. Show me a demo, watch it crash and burn. And it was actually one of the proudest moments as a founder for me because at the end of the hour long conversation, after showing the demo and then telling our vision and our founding story and what our team's made of, uh, we had flipped them. And, and the guy actually apologized <laughs> and said, uh, I get what you're doing. You know, I've been reading The Hollywood Reporter and if every week there's a clickbait about how uh, evil it is and how I should be afraid, but I see this as a tool. It just helps me where I'm stuck. I do most of the work still. And it's not what the doomsday scenario was, which was evil Netflix executive, you know, comes up with a funny premise and clicks generate 100 page script you know, send it to uh, the AI, deep fake place, send, send it to whatever, put the check in my bank and, you know, I won't even have to read it or do anything. Our app is, is the opposite of that. It's most of our writers input about 80 to 80% 80 of their idea to start and then they just get help with the things they're missing, but they still pick. We give you five or 10 ideas and you pick the best one and you edit it after. And so um, that's why we think you know, you will still own the copyright to it, um, but also that our users say, it still feels like my movie. It feels like I would have thought of that idea eventually. It just helped me get there sooner. And so uh, one writer I talked to uh, said, you know, it took me seven years to write my last screenplay. Um, and I had another idea and in your app, I finished the hundred page screenplay, all the character sheets and everything in 10 days. And I'm halfway through storyboarding it myself. I can't draw, but now I can storyboard it. And, um, he was, he was really happy. <laughs> so I think what we say is in writing and my brother had this too. It took him almost a decade to turn his novel into a screenplay because he was doing it part time evenings and weekends. He's an AD on set all day. It's exhausting. When he was done with it, no one really wanted it. So he's like, okay, now I have to start again with a new idea. Is that going to take me another 10 years? So what we like to say is the app will let you get that vomit draft out for all your ideas and get more shots on net. And then maybe uh, of if you can come up with five new uh, scripts this month, maybe two of them end up being a hit. Uh, so we just want it to be more of your best work, but faster. How does Saga make screenwriting faster? Yeah, so what I've learned from interviewing probably a hundred screenwriters around the world now is everybody um, writes different and they have a different process. So for example, my brother starts with a cork board and cue cards and he will try to plan out the most important beats then he goes back does characters then a lot of the plots and and he plans it out for almost weeks before even writing you know the first page other people i know sit down they you know they bring a typewriter to a cabin in the woods and <laughs> just start typing uh, maybe have a few drinks uh, and um so everyone does it differently. I'm not sure what's the fastest or best, but all the potential customers and interested people who reached out to us 
say they get stuck on the planning phase. And so what our app does is it's almost like a film school in a box. My brother went to film school, took advanced TV uh, film production. He's my co-founder. He helped design the app. It's almost like a form. And, you know, in his classes, there was a day on plot, a day on characters, a day on acts, a day on beats. And those are the tabs in our app. And they help you, um, you know, ChatGBT, you ask it for a character, it'll say name, physical description, and, and maybe one or two things about them. Ours, we've studied um, some of the great books, KM uh, Whaling, Creating Character Arcs, among others. And so we know that um, even secondary characters need uh, a, a compelling backstory. And so uh, we have boxes for the ghost, the, the lie, the need, the want with examples. And when you hit generate, we look at everything you've written from the title to beat 40 to whatever. And then we asked um, the GPT API, among others, to give a bunch of ideas. If you don't like them, click it again, click it again. It never gets tired, it never runs out of ideas. Chances are there will be one in there that you like. Um, and what our users also say is, because you can see, and this is why it's hard in ChatGPT, it's a scrolling chat window, but on our app, you can see the process, you're filling in the blanks, and um, so I think we can get people through the planning phase, just if they have a premise or a log line, in, in less than a day or maybe two days. And so um, I think that really speeds things up. The writing part, um, to be honest, people use it less for generations, um, for technical and product decisions. There's no, okay, now generate 100 page script button on our app. Um, we encourage you to start writing and then when you get stuck on a line with writer's block, you can say, give me an idea for the next line. Or if you have a beat and there's just a scene in the midpoint that you just can't, you're staring at a blank page, you can say, okay, help me, but it'll, it'll give you half a page. So the idea to speed people up is to prompt them, to get them around writer's block, to show progress. How it does not speed people up is by doing all the work for them and writing everything for them. And so that's what I think is really going to be different about us and our company um, and um, why our users seem to like it, enjoy it better than ChatGPT or, or some of our competitors. Yeah. And it doesn't complain that it's tired. <laughs> well, it's interesting. So we also do storyboards. And so that came up. Sometimes we interview people and they say, listen, I'm a writer, WGA, not, not crossing that line, never going to use it, not even going to use ChatGPT to like do a beat sheet for me. And that's fine. People don't have to. Not everyone has to uh, use AI. That was one of the outcomes of the script negotiations. The studio can't force people to use it. But a lot of writers we talk to say, um, I can't draw. And I would love to communicate some of the scenes as they are in my head. Uh, the storyboard is really, it communicates the emotional impact visually of the scene. Um, and so um, uh, one, one of our, our users who's a director said, I am so picky with storyboards and someone will draw them by hand or you know, with a pen on an iPad and they'll spend weeks doing it. It's very expensive, it's like $500 a day, you know, for anyone to hire a storyboard artist. And then they would say, you know what, I've changed my mind. I want you to redo everything, but make this character, you know, this gender or, or ethnicity. Or the, and so the human has to go redo it all. And then they say, I will go back three or four times and make them redo hundreds of storyboards. And by the fifth time, they hate me. <laughs> and that's when I, re I think, okay, I have to compromise and give up on my vision of perfection. And what that person loved about our app is you can keep asking for the smallest changes a million infinite times if you want, and it will never get tired, it will never complain, and it will, you will end up with um, almost more creative control by using AI. So that's a feature that a lot of writers who don't like AI writing, they are very interested in the storyboarding aspect and now we're adding previs. So if you saw Sora from OpenAI, 
Um, we're using a, a version from a different company, but we'll integrate Sora soon. And then you can actually do previs and animatics on all your storyboards. And, and everybody loves that. Writers, storyboard artists who can animate uh, and directors. So yeah, I think it's, it's going to be great.